Hello, I've got um, got a coffee and a story to tell you today. And I thought I would start with a bit of a confession. It's a bit of a shameful confession. And here it is. I am a show off. I like recognition. I like to perform and I like to be the centre of attention. There you go, I've said it. Genuinely, genuinely, joking aside, I've struggled for many, many years feeling ashamed of the fact that I actually really do like recognition. I like to give recognition to people when they've done something that I appreciate. And I feel like I personally need recognition in my life as well for the things that I do. And that's really hard to um, admit openly because I grew up in a household there was me and my brother and we were brought up that you don't show off nobody likes a show off nobody likes people to be the center of attention and we were brought up my mum and dad were lovely people but they were very underconfident both of them and in our household you didn't stand out it wasn't it wasn't the done thing to stand out it wasn't the done thing to brag or boast about achievements and it's interesting actually because my mum's sister so my auntie had three kids and we when we were growing up all we ever really heard was how amazing these three girls were and all of the wonderful things they were doing and all of the brilliant things they were achieving and I remember when I was growing up thinking, we never get that kind of recognition. And I think it's stuck with me all of my life. Um, I'm sorry if I'm a bit crooked. I've got the camera sort of tied onto the steering wheel of the car, but I'm a, a wee bit crooked. And I was kind of, I think both my brother and I would probably say we, we identify with this sort of sense of, always not being quite good enough in the shadow of our cousins whose both their parents painfully bragged about their kids and I say painfully because I think there is a balance between support being supportive and recognizing achievements and being proud and actually being over the top braggy about your kids but it what it's done is it's left me, I can't talk for my brother, of course, but it's left me throughout all of my adult life with this kind of paradox around a need for recognition and an enjoyment of being a performer, if you like. So I'll talk a little bit in a moment about how this has shown up throughout my life, but um, there's sort of paradox between wanting to be recognized needing to have that recognition wanting to i wouldn't quite call it showing off but wanting to be heard be seen to perform is the only way i can kind of talk about it and and if i think about the things i've done in my life growing up there's always been a performance element in most of the things that i've done but balancing that with the inner child stuff going, nobody likes a show off, don't be a show off, don't boast, don't brag, um, you know, sit back, don't don't get noticed. Um, you know, it was it showed up in things like if you if we went to a fair or a fete or whatever you might call, you know, like a, a village fete type thing, and maybe they had people there who were teaching you how to do circus skills for example I, I can remember this quite clearly going to like a, a village fair and they had this uh, group of in fact it was a circus thinking about it and they had this sort of sideshow going on where the kids could go and play around learning how to juggle and doing all this sort of walking on stilts and things like this and I wouldn't I wouldn't go and have a try even though I desperately wanted to because I didn't, I didn't want to be that kid that was showing off. 
And I remember, you know, like lots of other kids would be the first ones to put their hand up, me, 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 me. And I just always had like mum and dad's voice. Nobody loves to show off. Nobody likes to show off. So I wouldn't ever sort of put my hand up and volunteer for anything like that. I was always like the kid in the, in the background. But all through my sort of adult life, there have been, and childhood actually, there have been areas of my life where the performance has come through. So I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. One of my earliest memories was at primary school and we were doing drama and we had to go and find a celebrity um, on the television or a ter television personality and we had to do an impersonation of them and I can remember I was probably about nine and I did an impersonation of the Irish comedian Dave Allen and I don't know if you're not in the UK you might not even know who Dave Allen is so this would have been in the 70s and Dave Allen used to come and he'd certainly talk he'd do jokes about um, Irish people and he'd do jokes about Catholics and uh, religion and um, you know I think about it now <laughs> I'm sure he would not be politically correct and he always had a cigarette and he had half a finger if I remember rightly he had sort of half a he lost half a finger and he would sit in his chair doing um, his his gags uh, in his Irish accent and he'd be sort of brushing like brushing dirt or dust or cigarette ash or something off his sh off his off his trousers and I remember choosing him to be my personality that I impersonated and not everybody got to do their performance but I didn't I kind of pulled up a chair and I told a joke and I can remember the joke to this day I'm not going to tell it here because thinking about it it was one of Dave Allen's jokes and it it probably was a bit of a shock for the teacher but as a nine-year-old I didn't really understand <laughs> maybe one day if I'm brave enough I'll share the joke um, it's definitely not politically correct and probably a little bit rude and I didn't realize when I was nine anyway I told this gag and I did this impersonation of Dave Allen and I got such a fabulous response from the rest of the class and the teacher and everybody clapped and applauded and said how good it was. And that's one of my very, very earliest memories of performing and getting a reaction to it. And uh, it was just the most amazing feeling because I wasn't, I wasn't um, an unpopular kid at school, but I wasn't one of the popular ones either. I wasn't particularly... Um, I was never good at sport. I was okay-ish at music, but I didn't excel. So there was nothing really that I excelled at. I was I was particularly average, I think you'd call me. And this is the first time, this is a, certainly the first memory I have of getting that recognition. And not long after that, I found a theatre group, a youth theatre group in our local town. And I asked my mum if I could join this youth theatre group. And we, it was called the War's End Young People's Theatre because I grew up in a little town outside of Newcastle called War's End, which is actually where Hadrian's Wall ends, hence the name War's End. And I joined this this theatre group and it was kids, I can't remember the exact age range, there was quite a broad age range, so I think by this time I'd have been about 10 or 11 when I joined the group. And we did, I remember the first production we did was about the Pied Piper and I, you didn't have to audition or anything, but we did sort of improv workshops and then you'd get cast into the roles from how you did with sort of Im improvisations and things around the script and I got nowhere I, th I can't even remember the part I played I think I was just one of the children of Hamlin and I didn't have any speaking part but I loved it I just loved it and we we had to perform at the the art center where we rehearse and then we took it to some local schools in the area and performed it at different schools. And I just remember this feeling being on stage of just for the first time, I think, feeling like I, I had something to offer. And we did we did the Pied Piper. And then the next one we did was all about Pocahontas. 
um, the, the Indian princess po Pocahontas. And I remember I was the only person in the group that didn't have a line. I was an Indian squaw and I had to be like made up in, you know, my, my skin coloured and things and had to wear this sort of long dark wig and typical sort of stereotype of Native Americans as, as Indians, Red Indians. And I remember being really upset that I didn't get a line to say in the, in the play. And I asked the director if I could have just one line and he gave me a line. I had to work hard for it, but he gave me a line. There was only, there was two of us actually um, that didn't have any lines. And I remember at the time thinking, it's because I've got a Geordie accent. It's because I've got a Geordie accent. It didn't occur to me that everybody else in the group also had Geordie accents and that wasn't holding them back. And then it was um, all of the stories I was telling myself around why I didn't get a line. It was all to do with my voice. I was too squeaky. I was too Geordie. I didn't sound smart enough. All of these things. Anyway, after that performance of Pocahontas, and we did the same. We took it round schools and, and different art centres and things. I left the group. I think I was a little bit disillusioned that I... I, I, this was the second performance and I didn't get to have a line. So I'd have been probably 12 or 13, maybe 12 by this time. And I had a couple of years away. And then I rejoined a few years later. Um, I, I took drama as a um, subject at school. It was the only subject that I really enjoyed in my secondary school. I didn't have a great experience of secondary school, but my teacher, Mr. Shearing, was at Graham Shearing. He was, I don't even know if he's still around. We used to call him Fuzzy Bear because he had this big, like, mass of red, curly, wavy hair. We called him Fuzzy Bear. And he was, he just had so much... I don't know, belief in me and he was so um, encouraging. We, we did um, Joseph and his technical dream coat and I was one of the brothers in a school production and I loved it, I really enjoyed it. And that encouraged me to go back and rejoin the youth theatre group, the Walls End Young People's Theatre, when I was probably about 15, 16. So quite a few years had gone by by now. And it was a completely different group of people. We'd got a new director. I don't know what had happened in those few years, but the the adults that were sort of running the group had moved on and we had a new group. It was much, I don't know, maybe I was just older and I fitted in better, but I just loved it. And we, I, we did a, a couple of um, sort of bits of street theatre and things. It was actually, so it must have been when the miners' strikes were all on because it was all quite political. That was one thing about the group. It had got very socialist, very political, and I didn't really, I, I'm not into politics, never really have been. And that, I didn't really understand an awful lot of that. But I did know that I just loved the atmosphere. And we did this talk through or walk through of a new play that they were putting together. It was a play that had been written for the group called Cookery for Boys. And it was it was so topical when I think about it. It was it was a comedy and it was about the CIA infiltrating the Greenham Common women um, at the time and the nuclear disarmament movement, which doesn't sound very comedic, but it was quite it was funny. Anyway, we did the run through and they gave me the, the part of Nancy to, to talk through. I, it, it, I didn't get the part uh, at the time. I was just, um, we were just reading through. And I, Nancy was an American and I had to do this American accent when I was reading the part. And I had no idea how to do an American accent. And it came out as this really sort of deep Southern American drawl. <laughs> and I, I remember sort of thinking, oh, God, that sounds awful. And everybody was like, oh, wow, that is brilliant. And I got cast as the lead, the leading lady in this show called Cookery for Boys uh, because of this, this bizarre American accent. I think it was for the comedy factor. I don't think it was a very good accent. And I absolutely loved that, that show. And we, we actually 
took it to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. It must have been about 1980. Ooh, 1982, 1983, somewhere around there. Um, and we went and stayed in this caravan on the outskirts, well, on a caravan site, on the outskirts of Edinburgh. And we performed this, uh, this show cookery for boys. And I remember on one of the nights at the Edinburgh Festival, um, at the end of the show, somebody bringing me a great big bouquet of flowers at the end of, of the session when we took our final bows. And it was just, just incredible. So this whole kind of performance and recognition, it, it, it was, it's been a, a kind of a theme. It's, I think it started there and then I kind of gave, I, I met my first husband, moved away from Newcastle. Uh, lost confidence I think in acting and things like that in fact I lost confidence in a lot of things married to him but that's another story for another day and um, a lot of the people that I was in the youth theatre group with went on to become professional actors and quite well-known actors and actresses and um, but I, I kind of put that to one side Act, I, it, I didn't really do any acting again after that but I did train to be a fitness instructor and I got the same buzz of performer, that performance buzz from standing up and taking group fitness classes in the old, I think sort of Jane Fonda, leotards and leggings style uh, aerobics classes. And I loved it. I love that performance element. And, and even then, you know, in my day job, if you like, with the MOD, for about the last 10 years or so before I left, I was in a training role. So I was um, delivering tr uh, in-house training. And again, that same sort of performance element was, was showing up. But in running through all of that is was this, nobody likes to show off. I felt like I, sh I shouldn't enjoy that recognition I shouldn't enjoy that being the center of attention like there's something wrong with me for wanting that and it's really interesting because creating these videos now and delivering stories to camera it's bringing up all of those same feelings of the excitement of getting out there and performing which I love the the reward of getting the the subscribers and the comments and the you know the the lovely um feedback for for the the videos that i make juxtaposed with the inner child saying nobody loves a show off stop showing off get back in your box be quiet don't stand out and it's a it's a real balance I think trying to try to get my head around this and I think it's something that I, I really want to fight against and I'll tell you why because I love doing these videos and I love doing youth theatre and I loved being a fitness instructor and performing and I, I'm like why why do I seem to stop doing those things as soon as I start to feel like I've overstepped the mark and I felt myself doing this over the last couple of days when my this channel has had a little bit of um a little bit of growth quite quite rapid growth in a short time over the last couple of weeks and I felt all of those old emotions coming up around oh you need to pull back you need to stop now nobody likes a show off and I've decided I'm gonna push through <laughs> and if people don't like it well, do you know what? You don't have to watch me. But I think what the camera has done is, and the, what the what YouTube has done is allow me to find a way to get that performance element across and fulfill that little need. Now, I am very lucky so far. Touch wood. I haven't got any wood. Any Just touch cardboard, paper. Paper's kind of wood, isn't it? I've not had any trolling. I've not had any horrible comments. I don't doubt that they will come probably after this video. Um, I haven't had any so far and I don't know quite how I will react when they do come as I'm sure they will. But for the most part, I'm really enjoying 
this medium and the the way that it's it's giving me that fix of showing offness that I obviously enjoy and makes me feel good so anyway that was my story and that is now 22 nearly 23 minutes long I'm sure it will be less than this when I cut out all of the waffle but I just wanted to share that story the shame I guess that I felt uh, for that performer in me and that need to get the recognition from it and maybe maybe some of you will relate let me know if you in the comments if you can relate to any of this or do I sound like a complete and utter weirdo I'd love to know do you do you relate to that more the kind of the the messaging from our childhood around don't don't stand out don't be conspicuous stay in the background nobody likes a show off i talk to you soon take care